Welcome back guys, and in this episode we'll talk about the mouth. Um, we have done the hair, we have done the eyes, and the remaining part is the mouth because these three parts are the most difficult parts that uh, for Life 3D material preparation. Now let's go look at the um, source file I used earlier, I showed you earlier. And remember this is the base image that I used, and I have the uh, normal mouth. This is normal um, and it's closed. So for mouth perimeters, what we're looking for in a texture material, it's basically one for mouth closed, one for happy mouth closed, one for happy mouth half open, and one for happy mouth full open. So there are two perimeters working. One controls the shape or as they call the form of the mouth, which determines either it's happy or sad or other kinds of um, form. Uh, sometimes live 2D samples models, they have at least three states in the mouth. One is upset, one is normal, and one is obviously happy, okay? But for my case, I think I only took two for this project. I used to use three, I only took two. One is this happy one, and one is the upset one. So these these are two um, shapes that I took, and that is for one perimeter. The other perimeter is basically um, taking value 0, 0 0.5, and 1 as the three states of the open mouth. It's called mouth open perimeter. And which means that 0 is when the character's the mouth is closed, 0 of uh, number 0 0.5 is um, now ha half open and uh, 1 is fully opened. Now these are there's no, there's no absolute rules for this. There's no limitations. You can have more than one. You can have two or three. If you can have like some um, more extreme expressions, right? And you got more uh, over the top uh, facial features. And you can always go beyond one to have a very large mouth. You know, some of the like 90s style uh, anime, they, when they are uh, shocked or they are yelling very angrily, they have the mouth so big it breaks beyond the border of the jaw, alright? So that's sort of an exaggeration sort of style that they used to have. Some well, some anime still use that today. If you look at um, what was that Trigger Studios, sort of Kill la Kill, and a few others still use that methods uh, a lot. And for Kill Ani, they don't do yeah, they don't do that except for a few cases or a few uh, um, characters. Uh, so in this particular case, we don't have that extreme expression. So all we have is three uh, mouth open states and two uh, expression for the shape. Okay, two shape values. So these are all we need for my model. Now, how do you know if you can take a mouth piece and uh, merge them. I could say currently I'm taking this one and I put it here and I know I knew that it would work But how do you know that if, if yours would work? How about this one? How about this one right here? She is open her mouth and Can this work now my instinct tells me that it doesn't because I can tell that this camera angle is looking from the top to the bottom all right, so it's sort of like a um, I think the camera level might be uh, above her forehead, that's how high it is, uh, zooming into her, her lips. Whereas this one is facing straight forward, it is eye level. And this one too is eye level, and that's why these are, um, there, there's a match between these. But this one, no. How, well, second, second indication that this is the wrong angle is that you can see that her mouth, is when she's opening, um, her lower jaw shows. Whereas here and here, you don't see any lower jaw showing or upper jaw. Does that mean that this has more, more details than this? Is that the only problem? Well, no, because this is a matter of angle. And to prove my point, we can give it a test, all right? So uh, what I did was I copied, I select this area, I copy and paste into a new layer and I paste it on top of this middle piece here, right here. Now if I lower the opacity, you can see that this new piece is right on top of the original one. 
same size and basically by by position it is correct however you look at it you don't feel like it's right you look completely a different person okay and that is why almost like she has an underbite or something but um but that is the problem so this doesn't work the same for the eyes or the hair or accessories anything you want to um, take from one pic, uh, one screen cap to the main screen cap. Whether it works, the angle matters a lot. Uh, this could have worked, but I don't think I'll need this mouth. And I just took the eyes for this one, as you remember from last episode. For the rest of these, this is from a low to a high angle, and that's why it wouldn't work. Um, these are from these are slightly above the forehead too, so these aren't good. But I have enough and I could go with what I have. And for your case, if you you gotta test it. You gotta you gotta copy and paste and test it and that's the ultimate way you tell whether it looks right to you, whether that piece is um, what you call compatible or not. Alright. So let's go back to the main one and let's check how many layers do I have. I have one for the mouth happy mouth closed. I have two happy mouth half open and the happy mouth full open and then there's the there's the sad lips right here yes like inverted smile the lips right there and I got this one half open and full open and these are the six mouth that I have it is optional whether you want to have just three or even two it's good enough for an animation and um, or you want to have six or nine. I used to work with nine usually. This time I'm working, I'm working with six of them, okay? So um, these are all I need for my mouth. And that's probably it. You can give it a test actually. You can imagine if you want to know, well, what happens if I take this uh, mouthpiece here and make her talk in Live 2D, would it work? Now a way to test it is that you select the layer uh, right click and then just go free transform and hold on to the uh, lower dot the center middle dot here I mean the bottom center dot here hold down alternate and left left click and then you can move it and this is sort of like a preview of what it's like when she talks with this texture material as you can see it sort of work it surely works between this and this. It's just a matter of what happens here. All right, and let's just say this is when she started talking from uh, the frown lips to this part. And this is sort of what I'm, I'm expecting to see if I, you know, just take it simply, uh, stretching or uh, compressing and then releasing that texture material as a talking movement. This is what it's going to look like at this point. Now this is going to be problematic, but we'll talk about how to deal with this later. Anyhow, um, this is about all we need and I can, I guess we can jump into modeling. Finally, we can jump into modeling for uh, next lesson. Is there anything? Oh, before I go, uh, I think I mentioned this before. If your mouthpiece are taken from two different scenes, there's a chance that the color tone is different. Um, not so obvious when you just look at it, but if you use the dropper tool, dropper tool, where are you? I have lost my dropper tool. Wait, what? Where's my dropper tool? There you go. Okay, so um, you know you have you can hold two color palettes. Um, I mean two colors on a color palette at the same time Photoshop, right? So first you take one color, the the foreground color, and do a drop so eye drop here or a color color drop here all right and so you got the this color now you press x or press this icon right here to switch to the background color and then take the mouthpiece here and take this color now you can see uh do i have a tool nope nope oops but as you can see right here, uh, the two colors are obviously different. I can even paint on a new layer and give it a try, okay? So I just open this layer. This is one color, switch it. This is the other color. Now these two are quite obvious, uh, different in color tone. Um, so if you 
simply take this and paste it on there. It might look kind of off that her mouth color is changing as she changed the shape of her mouth. All right, and usually our mouth colors are consistent. We don't change mouth colors when we talk. So uh, what we got to do here is change this color tone and match with the main color. Uh, for better result, we can even add a shadow. For say like, I could have a new layer and I could add a shadow. Let me take this color, tone it down to this part maybe, and I'll I will do a clipping mask, draw it over like that, or I can, where's my sharp edge? There you go. Maybe like that, all right? And maybe I'll fill the uh, outline back in, but at least now I have a shadow just like this one, all right? But maybe more a darker color because the contrast is a bit different. But you get my idea, right? So that is how we can do it. Or you can actually just, you know, take this color, and first, uh, am I working on, yep. Yeah. And first paint over this, and then take the shadow color, and do that again, except on a different layer. Again, clip it with onto the mask, and do this. And I can add in the outline, and these two colors would match exactly the same, except that this looks a even more high definition than this one, because it's kind of a grainy uh, screen cap quality so it might look kind of weird or you can what you can do is not using these clipping mask use the original one and change its color by going to image adjustment and heal hue saturate saturation and here you can change it a little bit more red tone um, more saturation maybe maybe darker I think I remember that's sort of the color of course, you want to have like both pieces uh, on at the same time. Maybe this slightly to the left side, so you can have a comparison. But you can check if the colors are matching. If you have a good match, then you can go with that color tone. Anyhow, um, just take an approximate. You know, you just it doesn't have to be absolute, depending on how much quality you demand. But you know, characters usually talk really quick. Uh, their mouth movements is very rapid, so you don't see very clearly what the color difference is when they talk quick enough. Long as they're somewhat somewhat close, maybe 95% similar, that'd be fine. All right, don't worry about it. So we'll go into um, the modeling next episode and I'll see you guys there.